<laughs> what up, YouTube? It's your boy Banks. And we back in the building. You feel me? It's True Talks. Because True Talks, all right? Let's get straight right into it. So you already know, man, the other night was an important game for the Raptors trying to continue, you know, this win streak and what they got going on. Obviously, you know, you want to, again, like I said, end the season strong. And, you know, they had a couple of hiccups earlier on. And then including this game, now they're on a four game winning streak, a great back to back win versus the Suns and the Nuggets like that was important. That was it went under the radar how how great that back to back is like that's tough Suns and then the Nuggets both on the road. You know, what I mean, that's like, you know, with the altitude and everything like that's beautiful, man. Like you got to understand that, like and then you got D book, you got Jokic. Obviously, the Nuggets don't have, you know, Michael Porter Jr. or Jamal Murray and Jamal Murray. I'm pretty sure is ramping up and MPJ probably will be back before playoffs. Both of them. That's what it looks like. But, you know, even though they didn't have them, the Nuggets have been killing. And then the Suns as well. You already know what I feel about the Suns and how they've been. What elite looks like, and it's different, obviously, without Chris Paul as well. But regardless, that team is still elite, and I know Cam Johnson hurt them too. How he went down, but I don't know when he'll be back. But for the most part, like this is a tough atmosphere and a tough game to win, especially on the road in a back-to-back -back scenario. So when you look at it from that perspective, just all signs point to the Raptors just showing what elite looks like, and that was just beautiful to see back-to-back -back wins. That was tough, man. I didn't expect it. I thought maybe the split. At best, I thought a split and what it was looking like, especially if the Raptors have lost. They lost, you know, to the Cavs, to the Magic, to the Pistons. They beat the Spurs, obviously. The Suns and Nuggets look like it might be two L's, right? That's what, if you kind of just are looking at it from that perspective, how it felt and that's how it seemed. So to split it would be great, but then to 2-0 and oh it, that's what Elite looks like, man. You, bro, you got to love it. And then, obviously, now they face the Lakers, which was the other day, which we're here to talk about. and. Coming into that game, I already kind of knew that the Lakers were just, you know, the Lakers are are Fugazi. They're not what Elite looks like. They're what Fugazi looks like. Again, LeBron is killing, but, you know, LeBron's getting his numbers, but the team isn't winning. And a lot of his numbers, even too, is when they're getting blown out too and stuff like that. Then he'd be killing. And then when he's actually killing out the gate from the jump with 50 points, they win, right? But. How many times LeBron at this older age can he get 50, 50, 50, 50 like to win? You know what I'm saying? It's just they're at an uphill battle. And the reasons why especially is this small ball. The small ball has enabled Braun to like have the paint free and get his buckets. Enabled Westbrook to have the paint free and you don't run downhill. But when you face a team like the Raptors who they struggle with shooting other than outside Van Vliet, Trent. And, you know, OG, but OG's not there. Outside those two guys, they struggle with shooting, right? Pascal's hit or miss. Scott Ears hit or miss. Precious actually has been shooting good from the three-point line, but essentially overall, he's normally on a day-to-day, game-by-game hit or miss. Boucher actually has been shooting pretty good as well, too. But you can live and die with Boucher if you have to guess. But if you want to add Boucher to the shooter list, you know, again, then you got Banton, you got these other guys who aren't really shooter shooters. But the one thing with the Raptors, even though they don't have a center center like that, the Raptors will pack the paint and their spacing is horrendous, but they will kill you in the paint. So this was the perfect dream scenario for Raptors and Raptors fans that you're facing the Lakers, a team with no big man. Like they're going to abuse the paint. I already know it's coming to be a blow from like from time when I knew that they're facing the Lakers. I already know what time it is, especially knowing that I thought the Lakers might, you know, well, they waived DeAndre Jordan, so maybe start Dwight Howard or do something like that. But they didn't do anything. They're coming out small ball like they normally do. Scotty was going to abuse. I already know. That's why you see them out the gate six for six. Light work. <laughs> I might work. You know what I'm saying? Just like that. Pascal Eden and Mash and Paint Mash. Ah, ah, ah. Precious could Paint Mash. All three of them guys could Paint Mash. And it doesn't matter because you got a mismatch in all three scenarios. Someone, two, three. Or have a mismatch at all times and then you could all crash get offensive like it's just it's impossible for the lakers to beat the raptors with that personnel unless they were hitting on the perimeter at all cylinders and not missing any shot right 
And, you know, the Lakers are horrendous at shooting. So that is even, I don't even know to if you're going to actually assume that or believe that or hope for that. That doesn't even make sense. So this was, this was just, it was, this was catered for the Raptors to win. If they lost this game, we would have had to, you know, we would have had a serious problem. But, you know, I already knew they were coming to win that game, especially too. Raptors, normally how it goes when the Raptors struggle from the three-point line and they struggle from shooting, shooting, you know, horrendous percentages from three, that's when the outcome is dictated that the Raptors will probably struggle or might get blown out or they will lose. Most of the times, that's how it kind of comes down to it, right? Which is why I focus so much on their space and personnel and their play style clashes. But this game didn't matter. If the Raptors shot horrendous and even from three, what did the Raptors do? The Raptors shot, they shot 27% from three, which is Fugazi, 10 for 37. But at the end of the day, it did not matter. Why? Because they could paint mash. Ha, 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 ha. You know what I'm saying? When you can paint mash like that, and then, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, like, I already knew they were coming to win regardless of what the shooting percentages was because or were because at the end of the day, you can paint mash because they have no big. So when you look at it, man, I just, I, I, dog, the Lakers' defense is just horrendous. Obviously, late in the fourth, you know, LeBron started to snap, going to work, five for six or whatever. You're just putting in. You know, putting in buckets and, you know, when you blow out a team that that much, it's hard to contain that lead for the foreseeable future. A lot of the times a team will just, you know, and LeBron is, you know, he's going to stat pad and he's going to stay in the game stat pad because he has to beat Kareem trying to beat uh, Malone, which is coming soon, Karl Malone. So, you know, LeBron is going to always, even when it's a blow situation, he's going to, you know, be trying to kill and. When you look at it from that perspective, without even LeBron, other teams, you face other teams, you're blowing them out, even if it's their G League or, un, you know, their, their players that aren't really in the rotation. Somehow those teams still find a way to come back because the team that's killing or slapping isn't really trying like that, like that. So, you know, when you look at it from that perspective, now you're going to have LeBron as the one that's going to kill in garbage time. That's inevitable for a comeback. You know what I'm saying? It's LeBron. So... When you look at it, I wasn't too, too mad like that. The Raptors allowed that. Obviously, you didn't want it to get out of hand. It came down to the one three. You know what I mean? Um, THT three He could have cut it at what? Six, four, whatever it was. But he missed that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it happens. But obviously, that wasn't what elite looks like. But I already I wasn't in. It wasn't one of those Raptors comebacks where it's like, damn, they're probably going to lose, lose. Like the, they had an advantage the whole game, which was the paint. So. At any time, you could go to that and, it's and you know, it's lights out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bruh. So when you look at it from that perspective, the Raptors, obviously, you know, they're in a groove. They're in a four-game winning streak. You know, they have to obviously still end off strong. There's still, you know, a couple of, you know, big games coming up. And for the most part, when you look at it, you just have to appreciate that the Raptors are trying, especially – with the back-to-back, -back, like I said, and then, you know, the Lakers, and then, you know, obviously, they want to keep this win streak going. Who do they got? They got, um, today, they got the Lake, uh, the, the Clippers at 1030, and then they go back home versus the, 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 the Lakers, sorry, they got the Clippers 1030 today, and then they got the, the Lakers on Friday at home, then back, and then Sunday, you know, Philly, then Chicago, then Cleveland, so, you, you know, Indiana, Boston, right? Wolves, Magic again, Miami, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Houston, New York to end the season. So when you look at it from that perspective, especially right now, after Clippers, you know, they're not the full strength Clippers, but they at their home core, even at any time they could beat you. The Lakers, if LeBron snaps, can beat you, right? But I feel like the Raptors is just, the Lakers are just, the Raptors are the Lakers kryptonite for how they're playing right now. That small ball, you can't do that shit versus the Raptors. The Raptors will abuse you. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's always I think that's a guaranteed win regardless. Right. But, you know, after that, you got the the Sixers, you got Chicago, Cleveland and Indiana and Boston Wolves. That stretch right there, that five game stretch is tough. Right. Six games. Right. So when you look at it. You got to get your wins, you know, you got to get it how you live. You know what I'm saying? Get how you can get it. Get your wins when it comes by. Right. Those man, that magic Pistons, you know, those losses right there that they had that two losses in a row. Might come back to bite them, but for right now, you know, the Raptors are sitting in a comfortable spot in terms of the play-in. Um, they're at the seventh seed. If the Raptors were to play at home as of right now, if any things might change, but as of right now, Kyrie couldn't play on the road. 
versus the Raptors. So they would have obviously still KD and it's still the new look Nets with KD is still different. And I still feel like the Nets could beat the Raptors, especially when you look at just playoff intensity, space and et cetera, but shooting and all that type of stuff. But not having Kyrie, especially with Kyrie going for 60, going for 50, like, bruh, <laughs> Kyrie's different. So not having that guy any time and moment on the court, you know, changes the team morale and just changes how unguardable the Nets really are when now they don't have Kyrie. Like, it's easier, right? So obviously they can still be, be beating the Raptors, but it's easier. So the Raptors are in a favorable position right now, right? Um, Let's see if... uh. Let's see how the standings are even looking right now. I'm pretty sure that there are a couple of games. Yeah, there are a good 2.5 games above the Nets. That could change. Don't get it twisted, right? Raptors have won four. The Nets have won four. And, you know, it's a two, it's a two yeah, two and a half game kind of, you know, lead that the Raptors have. And then they're only one game out of the sixth spot, which is good. So that's what you want to catch. You don't want to even look at the Nets behind you, right? You want to catch... Best case scenario for both the Raptors and the Nets right now is if the Raptors are only one game out from Cleveland. You know, Cleveland's kind of, they're going to, might be in a funk due to that Jared Allen injury. I don't know exactly when he's coming back. He elected to not take surgery, right? To not have surgery on his, uh, on his finger, but he's going to come back. We don't know when exactly. And right, that interior defense, just that presence. He was an all-star this year, right? You could see that that's why, you know, they've been, kind of lose one, win one, whatever the case is around there. But if they do drop again and Raptors only one game and Raptors go to the sixth seed and then Cleveland's the seventh seed, then that's ideal for Brooklyn because you have Kyrie on the road, right? So they're probably hoping for even the Raptors to do good, right? If you have to look at it. But for the most part, you know, the Raptors getting the sixth seed would be ideal for the Raptors so they don't have a play in. Actually, ideal for the Raptors right now is probably to stay seventh seed, hopefully beat the Brooklyn Nets. If they can in this in right at the round of playing on the seventh seed, win that one game and then face Milwaukee in the first round, as opposed to facing Philly, even though I think Philly's a better match. Philly, because I don't trust Harden, I don't trust Embiid. I think Raptors could beat Philly in the first round. If I had to go guaranteed first round, you know, upset, it would be Raptors beating the Philadelphia 76ers. But they could also sneak and beat the Milwaukee Bucks as well, too, because that wall, remember the wall of Nick Nurse, like <laughs> Giannis Kryptonite is definitely Nick Nurse. So I think the two or the three honestly favors, like not favors, obviously it favors the 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 Bucks and the Sixers if you just look at it from outside looking in. But if I had to bet on if a team could have an upset, that would be the team to upset, right? It would be the Raptors upset in one of those teams. And I could honestly, I could see it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It will be tough with the Embiid because, again, the bigs, he could just draw fouls, and it's just hard when you have interior paint presence like that, who also has skill, but you're limited and you know on the on the on the front court side in terms of the Raptors. So I still think they could beat Philly. Honestly, I'd rather them face Philly than Milwaukee because Milwaukee still has Drew, still has Middleton at the end of the day. But either one, I, I'm not mad at either one. So the Raptors, you know, the more wins they get, they're in a favorable spot, get that six seed and face Philly. You get what I'm saying? And then you get a you get a Brooklyn a Milwaukee first round or Brooklyn Miami first round. But you know, I'm amped to see how this last stretch kind of pans out. We're getting more and more down the stretch. Again, beautiful weekend for the Raptors. Great. Probably one of their best in terms of that back to back was was tough, yo. That was tough. That was tough to win that. The Lakers are just atrocious. They're just garbage, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like I there's not too much to say about the Lakers, man. There's not too much. Like they're gonna blame Westbrook. They're gonna do all the you know, the typical scapegoat type of stuff. But for the most part, like when you look at it, there's a lot of issues that comes around with the Lakers, right? Obviously, AD is one of it and being injury prone. He might come back. You never know. And they might even get out the playing play in picture, right? Not even be in the play in, right? We will see how that pans out, especially with the Pelicans rising after the CJ McCollum trade, even though, you know, Ingram's one, two injured, but they're, you know, they're rising. So, I mean, when you look at it, the Lakers is just like, you know, LeBron could easily change this play style in a nutshell. He could literally have Westbrook bring it up for majority and LeBron with his skill that he's been displaying in terms of, you know, being the league lead and scorer, just scoring at this kind of output at this age. It's not just paint mashing. He's doing a lot of jump shots like he's mixing it, right? There's some games obviously he's going to paint mash more, but 
for the most part, he's mixing it out and he's displaying skill and artistry. So when you look at it from that perspective, that's the guy that should be off the ball, not the guy who can't really shoot, not can't really, can't shoot at all, right? Westbrook struggles shooting. So why would you have him the side backboard demon? You get him saying, why are you going to have him shoot an OD instead have him bring it up? He could come downhill and kick it out to LeBron. LeBron could slash. LeBron could spot or LeBron play off the ball, dive into that KD bag, playing off the ball instead of being on the ball. But again, that takes away some points. That takes away usage rate. That takes away all those things, which now in the long run or even in the immediate future kind of takes him out of, oh, passing Carmelo, passing Kareem. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at it from that perspective, it benefits LeBron individually. doesn't matter even if it's at the stake or at of the team or, you know, at the de the um, detriment of the team, it doesn't matter because for him, again, he's already stamped himself longevity wise, career wise, all of that type of stuff. He's he's stamped at this point now is just more so solidifying yourself even more and more and more with these stat, you know, stat kind of accolades. Right. 30, 30, 30 K points, 10 K rebounds, 10 K assists. No other player has 10 K, 10 K, 10 K. Right. Stuff like that that he's doing on the back end you know, and on the forefront or just of the stats, it's just, it's hard to kind of ignore him when you not want to propel him to a goat conversation or have him at in those, you know, conversations when it's all said and done. Even though I don't, I have him in a top five conversation, but not a top two, top one conversation, right? But he's still top five guaranteed. But for the most part, again, like I was saying it, him playing that individual, like, not getting a big, right, or not using a big small ball, right? Also, being in these fourth quarter blowouts, right? Also, playing on the ball, bringing it up and stuff like that, not having Westbrook bring it up and making Westbrook, who actually is the weaker shooter, spot up and, you know, not looking, not knowing what he's doing. That's why he just, he just doesn't know what to expect. He's just, he's just thrown off, right? He's not playing in his actual strength. He's playing in his weakness. Anyone playing in their weakness, will look weak. So when you look at it from that perspective, man, you have all these factors playing in. I definitely think that it benefits LeBron to just be padding in these games, even though they're losing. It doesn't matter if he's winning or not, because again, he's padding. He's trying to get these stats. So when you look at it from that perspective, man, like I said, LeBron to me is the culprit and he actually, you know, is the one you sh people should be focusing on, even though they're focusing on Westbrook as the scapegoat. But I think LeBron, they really need to focus on him and what he's doing, you know, to really dissect if this team is cap or not or whatever the case is. So, you know, for the most part, the Raptors are just anus, man. They're just atrocity. They're just fugazi. Whatever word you want to insert, insert here <laughs> because that's what the Lakers are. So you already know, man, it's just, bro, it's true talks because true talks. Share, like, and subscribe. We out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. You feel me? Click that notification button so you know when I'm here, because I'm here. I appreciate y'all. You already know. Again, click that link below, too, to subscribe to the Patreon and, you know, or the PayPal to set it and forget it. Help help your boy. Support your boy. You already know. I appreciate y'all. It's what Elite looks like in terms of the Raptors, man. Beautiful to see. And I'm out, man.